Hi, I'm Mike Massimino. We've been following along with the astronauts who are going to fly the next shuttle mission to the International Space Station. What you are about to see is the crew practicing for their mission, the team that is responsible for training them, and get a sense of what it's like to fly the shuttle. This is SCS 130 behind the scenes. George Zamka, the commander of STS-130. I just realized, I'm sorry, you're a Marine Corps guy, right. and Scorch is a Marine Corps guy. Both of you went to the Naval Academy, right? right? And now you're one after the other. Is the Marine Corps all excited about this? Yeah, yeah, there is something I want to say about it. Actually, I'm, I'm the third Marine commander in the row, because That's we, right, we, you had we had CJ, CJ Sturk out oh, awesome. before them. All right. uh, and, uh, we had uh, Doug Hurley who flew before that. So actually we've had five Marines fly in a row up on the last uh, space shuttle missions that we've had. So it's it's been pretty big for us and pretty exciting. Yeah. And, and uh, it, Marine Corps is small, everybody knows everybody. So uh, there's a lot of excitement, certainly we're excited. And then the folks that we flew with uh, are also excited. So uh, it's really, really been neat. On the end of the run though, so it'll be a little while before the, uh, the next Marine flies. Well, what do you, you, had a, you had a nice run there, so that's, you, should, you should all be proud, and I'm sure the Marine Corps are very proud of you. Yeah, 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 very right. Awesome. All right. Very good. Anything else, George? No, sir. All right. Well, thanks for letting us in. I know you're busy. You bet. They're calling over here for you, probably. you got a lot of stuff to do, but thanks for letting us in and uh, sharing some of the time with us. My pleasure. Thanks right. for coming by. Right. Well, what are you doing? For, what's your role during this? Are you working robotics today or uh, today, systems? Or what are you today in this simulation, uh, we're working on node 3 activation. Okay. And uh, specifically, uh, and I'm setting up uh, some of the different uh, environmental control systems inside of Node 3. Okay. And, uh, getting that all ready to, to get a fully functioning compartment for the International Space Station for a long time. Well, we know you're busy. We appreciate, appreciate you letting us uh, speak to you. Good luck with the rest of this set. Okay. Okay, now DPS nav, what does that mean? It's like mumbo jumbo. Uh, data what is that? System system. Yeah, data processing, which is like your computers and stuff. And navigation, which is what gets you where you want to be. That's important stuff. Yes, to get you back to Earth. All right. Very important stuff. I don't know. Sam Schreiber. Uh, Sam Schreiber. Sam Schreiber. All right. From Long Island, New York. From Long Island? Where in Long Island are you from? Uh, Glen Cove area. Oh, that's nice over there. Yeah, they wouldn't even let me into that area when I was a kid. No. You're blocked now? No, they wouldn't. Yeah, they would, they, would, they would see me come and, you know, and they would be like, no, go back to where you belong. Uh, uh, flight control, guidance, and propulsion. All right. So how did you get here from Glen Cove, New York? This uh, is interesting. Through one school to the other, and then... What school? Uh, University of Maryland, and then uh -huh. University of Florida. Wow, okay. Got internship and started working here full time afterwards. Wow, so you were very interested in NASA growing up along yeah, just me. like I was, yeah. except like you know, about hundred years after me, right. apparently. But all right, so you like what you're doing? I love what I do. Do you miss New York? Every day. You go you really? Yeah. You going there for the holidays? Uh no. I'm getting married in three weeks, so I'm actually you are going, really? going to Italy in three weeks, so what the heck is going on? Can you but imagine? Italy, New York, it's very similar. You're going to Italy for your honeymoon? Yeah. Where in Italy are you going? Uh, Rome, Florence, Siena. When are you going to be there? Over New Year's. Okay, we're going to be there. Uh, I'm going to be there in two weeks. Yeah, okay. We're heading, I'm heading out a week. Wait a minute. Two weeks I'll be there. Yeah, I'm going to. We'll, anyway. Real okay, cool. well, that's cool. So you're getting married. That's big. Where do you, and where are you getting married? Down here? Or? In Woodlands. So you're, you're, your fiance is from Texas? Yeah. So you're never going back to New York, are you? We'll see what happens. Yeah, you're going to be stuck. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thanks very much. Who else we got over here? Got Robin. Who we got here, George? Robin. Robin? Hi. Robin, what's your last name, Robin? Enix. Phoenix? Enix. Enix. I should say it like Phoenix. But it's Enix with yeah, an E? With an E. Okay. And what do you got going here, Robin? The shuttle comm instructor, so. Ah. Uh. So you're she gonna breaks calm. She breaks calm. She makes sure we can't talk to uh, each other or Houston. Right. right. And then we got to figure out how to fix it. Okay, so during this sim, you're probably going to do that to them at some point, right? Yeah. They're not going to be able to talk to each other or to Houston, as George said, and they're going to have to try to figure this out. <laughs> right. It's the most important system. It's the most important system. Yeah. Because so if you can talk to the ground, then they can fix it for you. Right. Absolutely. That's the thing. You want to be able to talk if you can't, you know, if you can't, because then it becomes harder, right? You can't, it's harder to, right, don't you think? I mean, you got to figure everything like, out on your own. A lot harder. It becomes a lot. Ten times harder when yeah. we can't talk to each it, other or talk to Houston. It's good when you have all these, like, you know, like a thousand people down here helping you out as opposed to trying to figure it out on your own. You guys can figure it out on your own, of course. Yeah. But yeah, it's, yeah, we, we can figure most stuff out on, on yeah. our own, but uh, we, we're not a very big team. They have a big team that right. knows exactly what's going on. It's a lot better. I always look at space flights and open book test, and the people down here are part of the open book. You ask them a question, they, they tell you the answer. Yeah. Or they let you know what you need to know. So. So that's really important stuff. All right. 
Okay. Who's our last guy over here? Dave. Systems guy. Dave's a systems guy. Now, systems, that can mean a lot of things, systems. Dave, uh, Dave Denham, it, what's it mean, Dave? It does mean a lot of things. It's uh, electrical, hydraulics, uh, e just e which is life support, thermal, cedars, mechanical, and caution the morning, and pretty much anything else that nobody wants to claim, we get stuck with. Okay, so it's it's lots of stuff. It's like every everything, just about, just about all that stuff. So you're going to give them different failures as well today. Can you tell us what you're going to do to them? Secrets. Yeah. He tells you uh, secrets. Yeah, you don't want them to know, do you? Three or four That's right here. They won't figure it out. Good example. <laughs> Let's see. We're gonna. You don't have much confidence in these guys, or so. Um, no, they'll figure it out. Right, okay, right, right. They won't, they won't know beforehand. Okay, they won't. They won't know what the problem is. Uh, we're you. gonna kill some cooling, and then we're gonna leak some atmosphere into the cabin, and then we're gonna short out a main bus. This is just on one sim. Yeah. On one gonna, run. Yeah, I'm not okay. done yet. Okay, go ahead. Keep going. Then we're going to um, take away their vehicle cooling, and then we're going to um, break their payload bin. Were you born in England? Because yeah, you're also... Yeah, I, was, I was born in the north of England. You're born in... And your, da your dad was from England, right? But your mom was American? No, was that my, the... both my parents are both in English. So how'd you end up in the in the U.S.? Well, my, my father came here to business school in the, in the 60s. Oh, my goodness. When there weren't business schools in Europe. Uh-huh. And uh, he liked it. So uh, eventually, we ended up staying. Eventually ended up staying. Because you're also from New York. I lived in New York for, for many years. All right. And you, for many years, but did it, it didn't affect your accent. See, you and I, have. Uh, we, we both speak English, if I could be brave enough to say that, right? <laughs> so, okay. I, I you, missed it. Sorry, Mike. I say uh, we both speak English. We do? Yes. After a fashion. Uh, after what? After a fashion. After a fa I don't even know what that means, but he said, so you're, uh, but, I mean, my accent's a little bit different than yours, but we you spent a lot of time in New York, but you weren't polluted. I spent holidays in New York. I spent holidays. Most of my time in London. So can you do a New York accent if you're in New York? Not really. You, I don't want to get beaten up. <laughs> but you were in New York for quite a while. Yeah, yes, right? my family lived there for many years. Right. Okay. And, and you and I know each other for a long time, Nick. Did you know that, George? No, I didn't. You know how long Nick and I know each other? Oh, it's, uh, it's something like 20 years. It was <laughs> over 20 years. <laughs> yeah. We went to graduate school together. Mike, Mike and I shared an office at MIT. Oh, right. I met Nick in 1989. Small world, right? Yeah. yeah. And our, our desks yeah. are right uh, next to each other. We, we, became, just, we sat this far apart. Driving this far apart from each other. And we became good friends, George. And, and this is back when Mike was funny. I was funny back then, right? <laughs> really? Nick is, everyone, th everyone right, Nick? Can Tell George, funny wasn't I funny back then? Now. See, what's that? So I can imagine being funny. Oh, I'm right? boring now, aren't I, Nick? Yeah. Wasn't I funny back you then? even funny. I wasn't dragged down by life back ah, then, George. I was a little younger. I was younger. I was still in my yeah. 20s. <laughs> I've heard a lot of Nick's stories, but there's, if you don't mind sharing yeah, one. When you, when you played the timpani when you were in, uh, in grade school, do you mind sharing that story, Nick? Because, you know, kids, they see you this big fancy astronaut in his get-up. But you were going to school as a, you know, in England this happened, right? I, I played, I played would in you? the orchestra, the school yeah, orchestra. Okay, so would you mind telling us a story? If you have a minute, I know you've been... No, we, and, and uh, we were playing the national anthem. Catch all this? We were playing the national anthem of the school songs. The national anthem of England? Of, yes, at that, that was the school in England. So okay. it was the, uh, the English national anthem. Which is what? What's the name it's of it? It's called God Save the Queen. God Save the Queen. Very important song. Big song. Yeah, very important. Even I know about that song. And... Uh, I was one of the percussion section, a member of the percussion section. Percussion. I had the cymbals, the big cymbals. Cymbal, big ones. So it's, it's, it may not be the most important instrument in the orchestra, but it's just about the most visible, because you yes. stand up and you crash them together like this. And at the time that you're supposed to crash those things, I would say it's the most important uh, probably, instrument. Probably, at that second. instant. And in yeah. fact, they start off the song. Yeah. And uh, we'd, tr we'd rehearsed this many times, and it always gone well. And it, it went on the downbeat, the conductor's downbeat of his uh, his uh, wand. I think yes. What they call them. Baton, I think. Is it. Thank is you. It baton? It's a baton. Wand. Wand would be like if he's a magician, like Harry Potter's band. <laughs> that, they have true. a wand, but I think well, it's probably a your guy probably was a little bit like Hogwarts. But it was it was in England, so I really don't know. Maybe it was a wand. <laughs> so uh, on the day with uh, Churchill's daughter at, at the school songs, and it was it was a very important day. We were, it was in honor of Churchill, this set of this uh, performance. Was it his birthday or something? Was it Churchill's birthday? I forget whether it was his okay, birthday right. or not, but right. it was in honor of Churchill. Wow, Churchill's so a big guy. Yeah, I mean, he was important. important. Yeah, this is a big, a big thing. So, uh, on the day, I'm watching the conductor very carefully, and the song builds up to the point at which all the instruments kick in. And so you, you have to wait for the conductor. You don't know when it's going to start. Yeah. And instead of a nice, crisp, 
baton wave, yeah. I got something that went like this. <laughs> and I, I wasn't quite sure when to crash them, so I didn't crash the cymbals. You did it <laughs> on the big day. On the big day. You did not, not crash the cymbals. Song. For God save the Queen. And Churchill's daughter was in the was in attendance. I, Is that yeah. what it was? This was a big deal. It, it was. And you were how old? Oh, I was 15. 15 years old. Old enough to be embarrassed. <laughs> Did you get in trouble afterwards? Did the conductor come see you? Did you run? Leave? Is that why you came to America, Nick? That's, that that's, it, that's why I immigrated. All right. See, stuff like, we talk like that. That's how we talk here in the space. Copy that, you know, that kind of thing. You watch the movie mm -hmm. Apollo 13, you learn how to talk as a Capcom. What are you doing with the camera, John? Give me that thing. No, no, no. Give me, give me, give me the camera. I, I want you to talk about what you're doing. All right, go ahead, watch, go ahead. I wonder what you're doing. You, you've been John Grunsfeld is filming this, by the way. You, you've been describing how you learned to talk as a Capcom. Yes. And uh, and you're actually talking to a live crew well. now. Well, yeah, they're, uh, they're live in the simulator. And uh, Gary's our flight director here. And uh, yeah, they're over there, we're over here, we're practicing what we're gonna do and we support them when they're flying in space, hopefully in the beginning of February. During these simulations, do you ever forget that they're just in a metal box and you start thinking it's the real deal? Nah. <laughs> Not really. I mean, we, I, I, when I think of, you know, we're practicing for when they're actually going to do it. And you work the same way. And I think, you know, you, there's, I think there's a bit of difference between the real thing and the sim. But, uh, you know, you get practice here, it prepares you for the real thing. But it's not, nothing quite like the real, real experience of going through a real flight. So, I'm Just, listening. They're talking to my ear right now. But go ahead. Oh, space stuff. You can ignore them? I can ignore them. I can hear them talking with us. It's fine. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'm not just taking video. I'm working as a uh, as a Capcom, which is a little sign that says Capcom, which, used to, which stood for originally Capsule Communicator, right? But we yeah. don't call the thing a capsule anymore. Right. Right? We call it a spacecraft. So they say Capcom a spacecraft communicator. Right. We should be like a spacecom or something, shouldn't we? This is beyond our pay grade. How'd you get into this game? How'd you get to do this? Because this is a pretty cool job. I mean, astronaut's a pretty cool job. The flight director's a pretty cool job. I mean, how did you get into How did this happen? Well, um, you know, I came straight out of college. Here's a flight controller actually sitting in the console. You can see right behind me, the Enco console. You can see That's those guy guys sitting right there. He's They're, awake, thank goodness, or else we would, yeah, all right. They're responsible for the uh, communications asset and the, right. the video systems on, on the orbiter and all the commanding and telemetry. Okay. So I actually did that job for um, uh, about 14 years. Right out of college. Part. So you yeah. get out of college and right around you started to train and going, that's pretty cool. Yep. So that's a lot of responsibility coming for a long right out of time. college. Um, yeah. About 70 some missions worth over there. All right. And uh, competed to become a flight director and got selected. And right. so I've been fortunate enough to actually, this would be my fourth mission as yeah. a shuttle flight director. Yeah. Um, so, you know, a lot of years, a lot of hard work. Yeah. But, uh, Paid off. All right, so what's going on now? What are we doing here? Yeah. I'm about to leave here, actually. You're going to leave? No, I'm just going to Okay. Some kind of show. I don't know. Oh, no, but it's a, it's a debrief, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to debrief out. How did they do in the run? They did pretty good. They didn't screw everything up? No, no. Definitely not my stuff. They did good? Yeah. Better than last time? What's the number that it's usable, like 1,600? Uh, yeah, at least 1,700 through 1,700. Yeah, okay. Well. So below 1,700, URLs kicked it out. He's not, not even trying to use it. Don't pay attention. He's just yeah. talking numbers. So they did bad last time? No, no, no. They did good last time. They did even better this time. Well, they did better every time. Every time, time you get better. It's great. It's great because, you know, beginning, six months ago, eight months ago, things were kind of a little rocky, you know, communication back and forth. It's right. a little hard. But as time goes on, they really gelled together. Like the crew just gelled together really, really well. That's what happens. Yeah, so things are That's, that's good. Smooth. That's what you hope for. Yeah. You don't want them to get worse. No.